situation in my view that citations and fines are meant to address. We had many citizens come down and testify that they've had long standing relationships with this business and this particular business owner and, and, and I've looked at the photographs, I have read the record, I, I, I reviewed the data and, and I found the file to be pretty complete. And there was some information or testimony yesterday that something was missing. That may be true or not true, but I know there's a lot of stuff in the file for us to make it decision based on it. I want to thank uh, the agenda director for making all that available. It was very, very helpful. Uh, I have a concern that there were two hearings and the decision is made to revoke his license based on one issue at the end of the fence. 
And that's in order, as we consider today, as I review the record, everything is in order today out there. And he still could be subjected to fines. I'm just concerned that uh, the process that we use and the officers went out, I think the officers uh, did their job. Uh, they did activities which brought the business into compliance. I, I cannot tell by reading the record why the owner didn't fix the fence until after several warnings and a second hearing. And in the record, the decision is made to move forward with the revocation based on the fence. That's, that's what the revocation is based on, the fence. There were a lot of things where some of those were new issues brought to the forefront. So, so I, I, I don't support closing a business when citizens have come down and presented testimony as they have presented and strictly based on the fence. And I tell you, look at the record and you see that it's, it's based on the fence. That's the issue. The revocation is based exclusively on the fence. And the fence has been taken care of, it's up in order, and it meets uh, standards today. So again, I think this is a situation where citations and fines uh, would have been appropriate here. So I, I'm opposed to revocate the, uh, revoking the license. Thank you. Councilmember, Vice President Thank you, ma'am. And you know, as we review the record and consult with my staff, I just can't get over the, the fact that there have been multiple violations on multiple days. Um, and I liken this to the houses in my neighborhood that my constituents have a hard time living next to. Um, you know, if you go back to April 7th, they talk about rats. You talk about failed to construct, construct or maintain a solid fence. You know, these are things, and then you go to April on the 18th, high weeds in excess of nine inches. These are the problems that we get on a daily basis, the phone calls. And so, on this one, I'm going to have to go with law enforcement and try to and, and, and uphold their decision because these are the things that we ask them to do. Maintain law and order. And right now, uh, I'm in support with my council member, Gwen. Uh, I'm going to uh, vote to uphold this decision because this is the way, you know, and everyone, yes, we know about the, the ordinances that are out there. We can read them. You know, you make a mistake one time. If you didn't know those 65 drive to 65 and you're going 70, okay, get your ticket or you want it and move on. But now, it's like we, we need to make sure you know better next time. And I think this, this, particular business has had several opportunities, 14 opportunities to, to, to learn and do better, and I believe that they are not, um, according to the records, I don't know, according to the records and the notes, they're not good stewards of the property. And therefore, again, I'm going to um, follow my council members lead and uh, uphold the, uh, the decision that they make. Council Member Sardi. Thank you. I too have, and you, you being a district mm -hmm. council member, fights these type of battles day after day, week after week, and you have constituents that are concerned about bad neighbors, and, and, and maybe they're not bad neighbors, but they're just not a good match for that particular property. So there's a lot of things that they can't, even if they wanted to, be successful. So at this point, once again, as my colleague said, we, we ask law enforcement to go out there and do the work, we give them the tools, and if, um, if, if my colleague who, who this is his district believes this is this should be upheld and the automotive board has been ruled this way, then I have to be supportive. And uh, moving forward, if there's questions on the process, then we'll need to probably review the process. Thank you. Councilor Boykins. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to remind my colleagues today we uh, made an appointment of the uh, Houston Sports Authority. The uh, Houston uh, Commission on Disabilities, as well as the, uh, the uh, uh, Houston uh, First Corporation Board. And we tend to, we have to remember that we appoint these volunteers to serve and oversee and set policies and guidelines for these corporations. The recommendation from this board, after the, the based on the research we've gotten, the recommendation on this board was to sanction this automotive uh, company based on violations. But more importantly, and I'm going to follow that, more importantly for the district council members, let me just be real clear. Our colleague, Council Member Wynn, 
based on his research, knowing his community and his district, has taken a position to support the automotive board. I think it will be disrespectful to us to know what's best for his district. I would hope that you would be respectful of him and his opinion. Council member, I'm with you because if it was in District D, you know how I would feel about someone crossing over trying to pass judgment in my district. So I support you on this, and I hope that everybody else around this table will understand that your district, you know your district, you walk your district, and like Councilmember Davis explained, there are blighted areas in our communities, and every day we're fighting to try to adjust these issues. So you have my support, and I hope everybody else will respect that as well. Thank you. Councilmember. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I, too, have to uh, just chime in uh, in support of Councilmember Wynn in this particular uh, uh, issue uh, and to uphold uh, the decision of the board. Uh, not one time did they have to go out, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, not eleven, not twelve, not thirteen, but fourteen different occasions. How much and how long does a community have to wait when they are dealing with blight, when they are dealing with bad neighbors, high weeds, the things we fight against every day. So I get it. And so I uh, support you, Councilmember Wynn, on this one, and I will hope my colleagues will do the same. Thank you, Mayor. I think uh, in the information I read, I think the, the challenge with the fence was that the property owner, uh, the company, wasn't permitting the fence to to go up if I read correctly, but uh, one of the concerns I have is that uh, I think some of the information we're considering may be off the record, which is some of the testimony that came forward that uh, those that spoke on behalf of, of the business, and so I think we've got to be careful about that. Uh, Mayor, if I could direct a question to Attorney Feldman, because I know it's come up, I just want to be clear on this, that if the uh, his permits are revoked, can the applicant still apply at a different location when he's uh, uh, with a new business because it's my understanding that that's in the process of, that's what he's in the process of doing anyway. Yes. Okay. So this isn't a, a lifetime ban or any other sorts. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Boyd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, like Councilman Boykin said, um, I, I represent District F. However, I serve the entire city. So I appreciate your um, support. On, on this item, you have to realize, Kelly, that the owner were issued citations. However, he addressed the citations, not the violations. So this has been going on for two years. And um, we're not taking away his livelihood. He still has his skills. He's going he's gonna to open up another shop, and he's going to continue, and he's going to prosper. Thank you. Councilman uh, Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I, I don't have a record of all the citations, but I, I, two of them. Uh, one, I, I think it, the records show that the, the rats uh, came in because of the waste that the adjacent restaurant put in out. And, you know, I don't think rats are usually attracted by things that uh, they're in the uh, repair shop. And secondly, they're also cited for failure to have a licensed cat, and I think it was a stray cat. So. Uh, the main the reason I'm opposing, and I certainly agree with the uh, statements that we need to enforce for people who are not abiding by the law, but I think that we need to have a program where people are cited and then they are uh, given tickets and they're, they're required to come down and defend themselves rather than to accumulate the citations and put them all in one box and then take their license away. That's what uh, Councilmember Bradford stated, and I certainly agree. I, I think we ought to encourage the enforcers to uh, take measures uh, immediately and to, uh, you know, to take them when the when the uh, remedy is not as as drastic as it is here, particularly on the facts that are presented in the record. Thank you very much, Councilmember Bradford. Thank you, Mayor. I just concur that you know, in my experience as an automobile technician. Uh, a thousand years ago, I didn't find rats to be attracted to transmission fluid and motor oil. Uh, I, I didn't, and uh, no one's responsible for uh, straight cats. But I do want to say clearly for the record, there were several violations at this location over a, a period of time. 
And that should have been addressed, uh, no doubt about that. I haven't heard anyone say anything that was not supported by uh, the record. Uh, the concern I have is that the process worked. Uh, he came into compliance. And if you read the record, you will see that the decision, whether it's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14, that's not what they made the decision on to do revocation. The revocation was based exclusively on the fence issue, and, and I just have a hard time basing revocation on the fence issue when there was some testimony that the he, he was a lease E and he had to get permission from that less or it was a less or lease thing whether I can put the fence up when the fence goes up and that type of thing. So I, I'm just concerned that we be mindful that we have some really bad businesses in this city that needs to be aggressively dealt with. And it doesn't appear that this was one of those businesses other than he had violations that he didn't take care of right away. The process kicked in. He came into compliance. As we sit here today, he's a thriving business. Uh, in compliance. And, and I say this and I'll stand down. I frequently say that it is my opinion that the city of Houston tends to overregulate too many fees, taxes, and permit requirements. Businesses have choices. They can move across the line into Harris County. They can move up to Paralands, Woodlands, and, and Sugarland. They can do that. I think that we shouldn't incentivize them to do that and, and God forbid that we do things to drive them out. Uh, but again, violations clearly occurred that should have been taken care of, and I don't refute anybody's concern about what has been said. Uh, also, uh, I, I want to get this on the record too, that we represent in the policy manual that we are an oversight body. And if we're going to have oversight, we're supposed to dig into these issues and not just automatically move forward with what the board has recommended. We appreciate the volunteers' work on those boards, but the boards must understand that their decisions will always be subject to review and sometimes revision is necessary. Thank you.